Hello everybody, my name is Toph and I am super full of energy right now, so this is probably a bad time to be recording, I'm gonna have to edit out a million things. Alright guys, so, now that I've calmed down a little bit more and this is like take 10 on this part, we are here to discuss Lakiaro mechanics. I'm here to teach you guys the ins and outs of the flower, and I really don't think that Lakiaros are all that complicated. What can be complicated is what step to take and what rule to be using. Lakiaros follow a very simple set of rules, and once you have it down pat, you guys are going to breeze through these. They're not going to be that difficult. Almost all of the mechanics, unless otherwise stated in this video, count for regular Lakiaros. So if we dig this up here, you can see this is a 12 by 12 grid. This is a regular Lakiaro. Now I'm going to exit out of this. There's also Lush Lakiaros, which is a 14 by 14 grid, one of these at the practice fields usually will be a lush one. This is a separate time, but this is what a lush Lakiaro looks like. As you can see, it is 5x5 five five on any side of the plant. It's actually a 14x14 14 14 grid, and it appears as it has a lush old Lakiaro sack instead of an old Lakiaro sack as the reward. For these lush Lakiaros, most of the rules that I'm explaining here do not apply or do not fully apply at the very least, and I'll have a separate part of this guide covering the strategies used in a lush Lakiaro, or I might just append one of these videos at the very end and discuss them. Alright, so here we are at the practice fields, and I'm going to dig into this Lakiaro so I can start going over Lakiaro fundamentals. Alright, so here I've carved out a route with a bunch of right clicks to take a quick screenshot to teach you about the rules of a Lakiaro. I think I mentioned this before, but if you right click on a root piece, it will reveal the root piece. And so I traced this root piece out at the very beginning of this puzzle to give you guys some examples to work with. Rule number one of a Lakiaro. The Lakiaro itself is in this 4x4 grid here. Everything inside this red square, you cannot dig, you cannot click on, it is simply not possible. The next rule is whenever a root comes out from the Lakiaro itself, it will always go straight right after it comes out. So as you can see, this root in specific, as an example, starts here at 1 and then goes straight down for 2. It can't go 1 and then 2 or 1 and then 2 because it came straight out this way. It always has to go straight from 1 to 2. Next, we're going to look at the actual look of the Lakiaro. The root piece starts from the flower, and I should mention quickly that all root pieces will start from the flower. You won't get a thick piece coming in from here all the way at the edge or something, like from off the map. These first four pieces of this root are really thick. They look really, you know, they're big root pieces. They're coming from right from the plant, so they're pretty strong. They're, they're thick. They've grown big. And then this fifth one here goes from a thick piece to a thin piece. I'm going to be referring to that as a fifth root or a curved root, depending on the mood I'm in. And then the next four pieces are all very thin. This is probably the most important rule of Lakiaros. Knowing that this fifth root piece always looks like that is very important. So I'm not great at graphics, but I think I'm great at explaining, so we're going to have a little box here to remind you of the rules as I give them. These are the two rules we've talked about. Roots originate from the center, that is this red square of the plant, and roots always start going straight. That is the first piece of the root, and the second piece of the root will be in the same direction every single time. As we discussed, the first four root pieces are thick, and the fifth one has that little curve. The next four potential root pieces are thin. One thing that I didn't mention yet is that the possible length of a Lakiara root is between 6 to 9. That is to say, after this curve, there could only be one little piece of root and it ends, or it could go like this one does all the way 6, 7, 8, 9. Our final rule here is that roots cannot go directly diagonally. That simply means that it can't go 1, 2, 3. This can't be the third piece of that root. It can go 1, 2, 3, 4, or it can go 1, 2, 3, 4, but it can't go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all over the place over here. It will always go left, right, up, or down as its next move. When you see a root, you can honestly typically see the direction it's going into, but it may not necessarily be clear at some times. Just remember, it can't actually go diagonally. Now, if I didn't have these two squares revealed, let me just cover those up really quickly. If my puzzle looked like this, well, it wouldn't look directly like that, but if these weren't revealed, I might look like it was going directly like this, if the root was actually going in that way, and that this square would be the last piece of the root, or one of the last pieces, and these two would be dirt or not yet revealed. However, that's simply not possible, keep that in mind. For it to go here, it has to first come through this square or this square. Next, we have our hoe mechanics. Now, the hoe has quite a bit more to it than meets the eye. To start with, the basic controls are you left-click somewhere and it's going to dig deeply. 
If there's a root piece there, it's going to damage the flower. If there wasn't, it's going to reveal a large territory. Actually, either way, it's going to reveal a large area. We're going to just left click here and see what happens. And we did get lucky there wasn't a root piece directly here. But there's actually a lot more to this than you can see. And here we go back to paint. Alright, so this is a lot more complicated than I thought it would be to explain. I think I finally found a method that's going to let me explain this properly though. What happens when you left click is a 3x3 grid gets selected. Based on your hose enhancement level, a certain maximum amount of dirt can get revealed. This always follows a certain pattern. So what happens when you do a left click is that the game first checks the one tile that you clicked on and reveals if it is a root, a pebble, or a piece of dirt. After that happens, it checks the other eight tiles surrounding the tile that you clicked, making a 3x3 grid. Of these tiles, only so many pieces of dirt can be revealed, and once that many pieces of dirt have been revealed, no more tiles will be checked. When the game checks this 3x3 square for the other pieces of dirt, again not counting the center, the numbers shown here are the priority, starting at the top left corner and going from row to row from left to right. All of this happens at the exact same time of your click, so it doesn't just do this as like a cinematic or some shit. But this is what I've derived happens whenever you do this, and in all of my testing, this has rang true. Now this bit I know for sure. The maximum amount of dirt revealed, not counting, the click in the very center with a tet hoe is 7. With a tri hoe, I do believe it is 6 as well as I used a tri hoe for a while, but I hadn't figured this out at this point in time. I believe this is sequential, with a pry being 4, duo being 5, tri being 6, tet being 7, and pen being 8. However, I do not own any of these other hoes, so I cannot fully test this. I do believe this to be true, but if it isn't, I will have something down pinned in the comments or in the description specifying that this is not true if I find a counterexample. Unfortunately, I can't thoroughly test this, even if I wanted to buy a tri ho and downgrade it to pry and spend a bunch of money on that, I still wouldn't be able to test the pen ho, so I'm going to just assume that this is sequential based on the tallies on your ho. An easy way to remember this number is take whatever tally you have and add 3. Example of pry is 1 tally, so adding 3 makes it a 4. That means that 4 pieces of dirt can be revealed, not counting the spot you clicked on. I really hope that I'm explaining this well, and I'm going to give a bunch of examples here to show you guys what I'm talking about. So I have a tet hoe here, and let's say that all of these were dirt, but I didn't know that yet. If I were to click, it would immediately remove this piece of dirt, and the system would think, alright, 7 more dirt can be revealed, and it would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All seven pieces of this would be removed, but we're out of dirt now. All seven have already been removed. That means that this corner, this bottom right corner from where I clicked, this number eight, will not be checked. I'll probably find a great example of this later. So the shape that would get revealed in that instance would have everything but this bottom right square revealed and it would not be checked. And that is exactly how we use this rule. We use this rule to determine what squares have been checked and are definitely a root or pebble as they haven't been revealed, and to determine what hasn't been checked and could potentially be dirt. As just one more quick example here, let's say I had a pry hoe. Again, I, this is my guess, I don't actually have a pry hoe to test this with, but I'm assuming that the number would be 4. That would mean that if I clicked here, and if all of this was dirt, but I didn't know that yet, it would check 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's it. This square right here and these three down here would not get checked. If they are dirt, they would not get revealed. If they are root or a pebble, they will not get revealed. This is one of the main reasons why enhancing your hoe is so damn important. So let's take a look back at my first example here. As you can see, I have a little white circle centered on where I click, and we can count up here and see that one, two, three, four, five, six dirt got revealed. But then here we have these two spaces left. Because I have a tet ho, I know that seven possible dirt spaces can be revealed. Once again, this doesn't count the center, my initial click. Because that many dirt squares did not get revealed outside of the center, I know that every remaining tile in this 3x3 square is either a root or a pebble. This is going to be one of the main ways we work out where roots are when we do a Lakiaro. You want to make sure that you're keeping track of this kind of stuff. Because now if I tab back in, let me just do this live actually really quickly. If I tab back into my BDO source, and I go to my Lakiaro, I can right click here and I'm going to know that this is either a root or a pebble. Actually, since this is a practice one, I can left click and I'm going to take a dent out of it. After I click it here, this will be our next example to take a quick look at. Alright, so here's the left click, it's going to be a root or a pebble, and it is indeed a root piece. So let's quickly analyze this click. 
and as I clicked here, it will do that check in a 3x3. I can clearly see that 7 pieces of dirt did not get revealed, which means all the tiles in the 3x3 have been checked, and you can see these 1, 2, 3, 4 tiles here, being as they didn't get revealed, are all going to be roots or pebbles. And if I want to right click, I can confirm that right now. So, going back to paint, one other thing I wanted to cover is this 3x3 grid cares if you're clicking a side. If I clicked right here, it would check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's it. The, there's no area to check up in this top section here because that's the edge of the minigame, so those aren't going to get checked. So do keep in mind whenever you're going to be doing these digs, you don't want to be hitting this edge if you can avoid it in most cases. In this case, you're not getting the full value out of your dig. So back to this live puzzle, let's recap a little bit. As you can see, this root starts from right here and goes out 1, 2, 3, 4, and you can see it has this little curve here signifying it's number 5, and it goes to here, that's number 6. There's a few things that this tells us that may not be apparent right off the bat. First of all, that means that there is no root that comes out of right here because it would have to go 1, 2. And it can't go 1, 2 because there's already a root right here that goes 5, 6. There can't be two roots in the exact same spot. Therefore, you know that there is not a new root that originates right here. It also can't go 1, 2 because the root has to go straight out whenever it comes out from the plant. Also, as said before, a root can be potentially between 6 to 9 pieces. So it could end right here, or it could go like 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to right click right here to check it. And my shallow dig says it's safe, so I'm going to left click. So let's examine this left click here. 1, 2, 3, 4 total pieces plus what I clicked got revealed. That means everything in this 3x3 grid did get checked because I didn't hit my max number of 7 or go over it. To the left here, this is to guaranteed a root or pebble because it didn't get revealed, and I can know that it's a pebble because no root can possibly connect to over here. So I can left click it, and you will see over here this pebble count. This counter updates live, so when I click this, this pebble count will go down to 1. You'll also see that my Manos Hoe durability will go down to 173 because a pebble does a slight bit of damage to your hoe. A hoe can just be repaired at a blacksmith, so I wouldn't worry about hoe durability too much, but make sure you keep it topped up enough that you're not going to run out of durability during your minigame. If you run out of durability, you're going to have a bad time. It's going to work the same as the trap doster ho the regular one completely unenhanced and your flower is going to take a ton of damage every time you make a mistake moving on this left click also told me that these three spaces are either roots or pebbles now being as there's only one pebble left in this puzzle and these three spaces didn't get checked we can know that at least two of these three spaces likely all three of them are root pieces which means it likely goes five six seven eight and ends here or it goes five six seven eight nine and ends here so i can right click here to determine that and we do indeed see five, six, seven, eight, and it continues on, and nine right here is the end. So without doing anything else from just our rules, we can know that these two spaces are safe to dig and get rid of the dirt on, because there's no root that can originate from here. This root's already fully accounted for, and this root's already fully accounted for. We can left click here, and it's done. We can also know that this square is safe to dig, because there's no room for a root to originate here and go outwards, there cannot be two different root pieces on the same square. So we can click this, and that gets removed too. The general rule that you want to take while solving a Lakiaro is finding areas where you want to find out more information that you don't have information on yet. You then will use a right click to check if it's safe to dig or not, and if it is safe, you will left click to find out information. Once again here, 1, 2, 3, 4 squares didn't get revealed, 1, 2, 3, 4 dirt got revealed. All four of these squares are now checked and are a root or a pebble. You can make a mental note whenever a square is checked that you do not ever actually need to check that square again. If the only these four squares and some random square up here were left on the map, you know that these four squares aren't dirt because they've already been checked for. It's already guaranteed that these four squares aren't dirt, but they are a root or a pebble. You can also use that to shape out a root before you've even seen any piece of it. I know that there's a root that goes along this way somewhere, maybe one of those is a pebble, but because there's only one pebble left, at least three of those pieces are root pieces. So if I wanted, I could right click over here, and I see it's safe, so I left click, and now we're getting more of the puzzle shape going here. One, two, three, four, five dirt pieces were revealed, which means these three are safely checked. So we can know now that there's a root that goes somewhere along this way. These five pieces are checked to be a guaranteed root or a pebble. 
So I'm going to click here because maybe this originates here. Again, I'm going to right click to safely dig. And it does not originate here, so now I can left click. And now we have the basis of the root shape. It is most likely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we don't know how much farther it goes. I can right click here to see 8 and 9. And now we've already completely found this root without actually revealing more than one little section of where it's at. Now you might say that the pebble could be here and it could actually originate from here and go outwards. But because of this length, the maximum length is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is not possible, and you can see that this root does carry on one extra space south. Now that we've discovered where this root is, the whole bottom section is already done. We don't actually have to dig through or check any of this. We know that this root comes out from here and stops here. This one's already fully accounted for from earlier, and this root guaranteed ends right here. There is no other way that any other roots could touch any of the dirt down here, so we now simply clear it out with our left clicks. Alright, so we're going to right click over here and left click. And this is the bottom left corner is now checked and is a guaranteed root or pebble. In case you don't believe me, I'm going to click here. And boom, you see that's a broken root. Shoot, that's the fifth root, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Gah, son of a... Alright, well we broke the root I was going to try and show an example with, so we're going to try and find it over here. As this piece of root is right here, we know that this root starts here and goes 1, 2. The first four pieces of a root are thick looking. It can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because then this root would be curved instead of just purely thick. It also can't be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or something, because it can't start from over here. This is a little corner piece. It has to start coming out from the flower directly. Additionally, we know that it's not like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or something because it can't curve at the very, very beginning. It has to come out straight. The first two pieces are always in line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's a lot of potential options here. I'm going to right click until I find that coveted fifth root here. Perfect, now we have this example of what I was talking about before. So I right clicked right here, and it was safe, and then I left clicked. And as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we've already hit the dirt threshold for a tet ho of 7, and this tile did not actually get checked, even though it did not get revealed in our 3x3 three three square. And actually from this shape, we know that a root piece starts here, 1, 2, 3, there's no way that it can actually get back into this bit of grass, this little undug piece of grass here, whatever this is, the unrevealed square. So we know that this is dirt, even though it didn't get revealed in our 3x3 grid. And we click it, and it goes away. And over here, obviously, does not have any root piece connecting to it. All of around it is already dug up, so we click it, and it goes away. A little bit more about the Tetmanos hoe. As you can see at the bottom of this description, it says number of shallow digs, 25. These are the number of right clicks that you get to use per puzzle, and with each stage you go through, this does reset. So if it's a five stage, you get 25 right clicks for the first one, you get 25 right clicks for the second stage, you get 25 right clicks for the third stage, and so on and so on. A couple other things I should note is that the health bar in a multiple stage Lakiaro is shared. It doesn't just simply repair or go up in health at all in between stages. This is why you want the Manos Ho over the Doster Steel Ho. As you can see, a Tet Manos Ho has 25 right clicks, whereas the Doster Steel Ho Tet has 20 right clicks. That makes a huge difference when you're trying to solve these puzzles. The reason that I highly recommend using a Tri or Tet Ho for doing these is both the amount of shallow digs you get, as a Tri gives 22 and a Tet gives 25, but also the amount of potential dirt that can get revealed per left click. Because of these aspects, it's very, very difficult to consistently get perfects on puzzles without a Tri or Tet Ho. Alright, I've listened and heard a lot of your guys' feedback. A lot of you saying you don't want these 20-25 minute really lengthy guide videos. So I am going to cut this here and separate it into the next part. The third part should be my general strategy for tackling these. Perhaps some examples of different situations once again. And another explanation of the rewards a little more in depth in case you mess up. As a quick note here, I do have a lot of this guide planned out as to how I'm going to be doing these different parts. But I'm very flexible and open-ended on it, and if there's anything you guys want to see covered more in depth or don't really feel like needs to be covered, let me know down below in the comments. I'm definitely interested in covering what you guys want to know more about, so do let me know, and I'll do my best to make sure that everything you guys are asking for gets covered in depth at some point or another. 
So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, do please leave it a like. Comment below if you have any sort of feedback to give me, any questions or anything, I will answer. I do read every single comment I get. Subscribe for future content if you haven't already, if you want to see more content from me, or if you want to see the next part of this guide whenever it comes out. I mean, it should be released relatively soon, as long as nothing big happens again. Hopefully, I'll be good to get that out for you guys very soon. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.